Hi everyone, uh, good afternoon from Vienna. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Making It in Austria. I'm your host, Adela Mehijanic, and today with me is Alisa Eresina. Alisa, welcome to our channel. Thank you so much for having me here. Really exciting to be here. Thank you for taking the time. It's weekend, uh, but you know, for the cool stuff, cool people find time. Um, <laughs> and you're my 41st uh, guest on, on this uh, channel. <laughs> it's really we cool. made quite a lot of interviews already, like pam, 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 one <laughs> after another. Love it. The baby uh, coming, so it was just like, okay, this needs to be done. And um, yeah, and I love it. So it was, it was my um, energy bo booster, uh, daily mm. energy booster to meet people and, and stay connected, stay in, in touch, get to know you all and so on. Uh, but let's get back to you, Alisa. So who is Alisa? What should we know? What would you like to tell us? Um, who is Alisa? A good question. <laughs> um, a human being who loves to explore and uh, create a meaningful life for me and others. I think this is the most easiest way to explain what I do. Um, I'm a coach and um, business I have many different topics and initiatives which I love to invest and speak and work on. One of them being the female cycle. So you see, I love taboos because I think taboos which have a profound value for our society or personal lives. This is my gem. So I feel like it's kind of an invitation to come like, okay, why are we not talking about this? How are we integrating this in our work and society and lives? So female cycle is one of that and with the female cycle i mean from periods up to motherhood so entire women's cycle up to menopause mm -hmm. and um, this is something which is very close to my heart um, but also other topics like psychedelics leadership new work um, mm -hmm. sexuality relationships and generally my corner is um, personal growth so i help um, individual people but also organizations to come to more authentic alignment in leading and creating epic stuff and um, my background um, is quite spread out, as probably you can already notice. So um, I'm having a business background and social ecological economics, mm -hmm. but also more um, the non-classical background from personal growth, from meditation, yoga, tantra. And I was exploring throughout my 20s quite a lot. And now only in my 30s, everything is coming basically together to a more um, coherent way. And this is what's I love doing and communicating and sharing with others and let's see where this journey leads. You also have your I am enough podcast, right? Oh, yes. 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 Tell us a little bit about that. So that's very much connected with what you're doing. Yes, um, absolutely. So this is something which I launched um, in the beginning of 2020 and it arises from a desire um, to connect and speak more openly about the topic that I am enough. Now, obviously, on one hand, like I feel this is or probably you can already assume this is something which I struggled with a lot throughout my life, not feeling worthy, not feeling worthy of success, happiness, or mm -hmm. just finding my space here. And I think it's not only a topic which is relates to women, but um, yeah. to more people, but um, throughout my work with women specifically, I also noticed that always this topic pops up. So I wanted to create a way of let's speak about that more openly, more warm heartedly um, and um, include uh, different leaders and role models across all industries. Because I think for me, and I know you're also very into leadership. For me, leadership has nothing to do with a certain position mm. or title or industry. It's more a way of how you show up to yourself, to the people around you and to life. So I don't care if you are a corporate leader or you are a mom or um, an activist or um, a tantric expert, like all of us have a certain piece that they can contribute. So I wanted to invite um, different leaders and role models and speak about them on leadership, empowerment, spirituality, because I think this is also somehow, um, especially if it comes to business context, something that we don't usually openly speak about. And I wanted to broaden a bit our horizon on the one side, what it means to be a powerful human being. It's not only the corporate path, it's many shades, colors, and expressions, but also to, to increase a bit awareness of how we lead our lives mm. and what matters to us. Mm. So, yeah. 
If you haven't, uh, so for, to our viewers, if you haven't checked um, Alisa's podcast, definitely I am enough. Uh, check it out. You have already like lots of episodes, 80, 90, hundreds of episodes. So really, really powerful women. Do you see maybe any difference, you know, like if you have guests from Europe, uh, they are open to talk about these specific topics or from the US or, you know, do you see any, you know, when you look at your, at your guests and you look when you look back at your interviews, um, you know, any any differences, anything that you would like to share with us, um, how mm -hmm. to overcome this? And then, you know, I just recently I visited this I'm Remarkable workshop from from Google. Uh, through the new IT girls and it was also a lot about you know uh, self-promotion uh, achievements uh, sharing you know visibility uh, and it's well it was well for you know for women but also for underrepresented groups uh, you know m minorities in any any setting so what do you see on your podcast any any conclusion mm -hmm. that you can share with us so I will I will um, would love to share also my personal experience because mm -hmm. it relates something to the work that I do, but also from the perspective of many guests who have been on the show. So one thing is, um, I think there are many ways of how to step into your confidence or power or to overcome this imposter syndrome. There is not one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And it might be that um, you create a network, as you mentioned, or find a community of like-minded people who support each other because we know um, and there's even the saying, like, you are the result of the five people around you. That makes sense because we exchange ideas, we reflect each other. So it's important who we surround ourselves with. Mm. And if you don't have an empowering community, maybe you don't have an empowering personal uh, family or friends back home, then it's important to create something. So this is something definitely what they see um, uh, also reflect in the interest. It's, mm -hmm. it's important to create people around you who support and lift each other up. Um, but on the other hand, it basically, um, people, it's like, like with your podcast, there are so many different stories, there are so many different approaches, there are so many different ways, but if I could point maybe one thing out, mm -hmm. it's just doing these things. So not staying in the head, but really doing the things. And that brings me to this, my personal experience, or uh, when I work with others and we approach these topics in whatever format, workshops or, or coaching, is that one thing that are really important for me to share is that we usually have this tendency to try to solve this problem with our mind. Mm. So we think about it, we try to find solutions, we strategize, categorize. And the thing is, this is actually where the problem started. So you're trying to solve something, the, the final solution with the problem. And my invitation always is to include your entire system. So work with the body equally as with your mind, because um, being confident is also it's a holistic process. It's a, it's, or a feeling that you are worthy it's a, or wherever you belong. It's how you show up with your body. It's your relationship to, to this beautiful vehicle. So it's an important part of overcoming these challenges to understand how to work with your body um, to be and feel enough. Mm. Thank you for sharing, Alisa. That was, you know, for me, very what you share, very emotional. And I can just say that for me as well. So um, these missions that I did and what I or what I told you about it, it um, came when my I, when I was really my mind, body, and soul. So they were really. Um, in line so to say and i i felt you know i really felt okay now is the time for me to tell my story because two years ago it was i was in a, in a different uh different world i would say and um, it wasn't the right time you know i and i felt then okay now i can really go out and now i can share my story of beginnings and and, and in the meantime and it's it's good to feel yourself, you know. I, I you know it's good to feel yourself because and and, and have the supportive system, you know, either a coach or or, or a mentor or you know a group of friends, uh, who can you know uh, help you uh, along that way, you know. Super. I important. love what you said. This bringing <laughs> this in one line alignment and exactly what you say I resonate so much with that and I think it's so important if you connect more to everything within you you get this intuitive impulses you can see them and sense them and then it's not like your mind is pushing you okay I need to create this right now or I need to advance my career like this or I need to make decisions but if you're getting pulled by 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 your by your um inner fire motivation intuition whatever language you use it and you feel now is the right time to drop yeah. for example your case the 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 initiative for podcast and so on and um, that's a very different way of approaching life and work 
Mm. I love it. I love it. Thank you. And people feel it. You know, people really, really can feel it, even though if you don't, even if they don't see you, you know, now like, like we are, you know, locked at home, but people can really feel the way you write the, the you know, the words you use, the way you communicate with, with your community. They can feel when it's coming, you know, really calculated one and when, when it's coming from your heart. Yes, yeah. yes. It goes beyond the computer. It's yes. true. You yeah. can feel each other's energies. I think this is also how we started when we, we pushed the record button. It was immediately like, okay, there is a juice running and this is something that you can feel on the other side of the receiver. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, for this. Um, how about now, since this is making it in Austria community, uh, so let's talk about you know, I, I know you were born in, in Russia, so you now live in Vienna. Tell us a little bit uh, about your journey on that side. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm born in Russia. I'm born in Moscow and I spent there um, around eight years. Then um, my entire family moved to Slovakia first. That was my first kind of um, interesting switch. I had to leave my language, my friends, my parents, Maybe that's my perception. Of course, it can be diluted, but I felt it was not explained to me or maybe I did not understand a child why this major shift is happening. And basically in Slovakia, my parents thought they wanted us. Um, so it's me and two, two siblings, so two other yeah. sisters to provide us a better opportunity. And uh, the decision was to go to an American school. So I switched my language from Russian to English. And one year later, we moved then to Vienna. And for me, that was another, excuse my language, mindfuck, like what is happening? Again, I'm moving to another country, another language. And there was quite a lot of pressure. Um, first of all, because uh, my parents did not have a social environment. It was for them a journey to, I mean, now as an adult, I realized, well, my parents were not so much older than I am right now. And they moved to a new country and there are many challenges involved, different culture. You don't have a social network. You don't speak yet the language. You don't know how to build up stuff. And plus you have kids who you're sending to school and hope the best for them. So I get more compassionate with that. Um, however, for me as a kid, that was quite challenging because I just knew I need to learn language very fast, mm. um, the German, and I want to be part of it. And I specifically remember when I was in um, Vorschule, so the, uh, when I was eight, nine, something before I had to join a gymnasium or something, higher education. And I was in school among my classmates and I didn't get anything. I felt so isolated. I could not speak German. So... Um, yeah, so that kind of started off and it continued a bit because um, I felt um, already quite an, not an outsider, but I already felt I'm a bit different uh, than my colleagues. I'm more interested in uh, questions about what is nature, what is reality, why, what the fuck are we doing here? Um, I went also through um, identity crisis and depression and um, 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 a post-traumatic stress disorder. So there are many things that came together. Uh, but if it comes to moving to a new country, I want to give your audience or the people who are listening also the mm -hmm. aspects of, yeah. of um, to that. I remember specifically feeling ashamed being Russian. And I tried everything possible to hide this and become as quick as possible Austrian. Mm -hmm. And this reprogramming, really coming back to my roots and maybe dissolving this conflict, um, just happened a couple of years ago recently where I'm more connecting to my roots and just mm -hmm. um, seeing that this definitions and labels are um, not important. But back then it was quite an interesting point because I tried to comply on the one hand, but on the other hand, I knew also my nature, entrepreneurial spirit was different. And... Um, yeah, we can we, we can talk more how, how how that developed, but I think one of the most uh, meaningful moments for me was when I joined because in the beginning I wanted to do psychology and art, mm -hmm. so I was up the front. Then I had another depression episode after I was not taken by an art school, and they told me I should apply one year later, then I would have a space there. And my sister, my younger sister, actually dragged me to VU. And I registered me there was like, okay, I'm going to do one year business or something. And then back to art school, which did not happen. I stayed there, thankfully. And um, 
although I did not like everything what I found there, and like again, I think we can we can use an upgrade in terms of education system, mm. um, less theory, more practicality, more connection, more mm. diversity in the viewpoints. But I joined a, a student-led leadership uh, organization. And this was the moment where it completely shifted my way of how to build, if you want to say career, or like it gave me more, more, uh, more understanding of where I belong. So coaching was interesting. Mentoring was interesting. Business development was interesting. People spoke in English. So I made it back this, this uh, transition to English. And this is what I do now. I work, mostly work in English and German is my other mother tongue as well. And um, I started to to enjoy enjoy this process of exploring, trying out. Basically, most of the things what I do are based off this experience, mm. because I had a playground where I felt I can fail and it's okay and I get supported. So I see this importance what we already mentioned before of having this community, which uh, creating this environment, especially for young people. If you're young and moving to mm -hmm. Austria, I can warm heartedly recommend to find a sweet spot for a student organization or any doesn't matter if it's volunteer whatever it is but a format where you can connect with like-minded um, open-hearted um, and funnily enough out of the student-led organization many of these are still entrepreneurs in the Austrian ecosystem um, I know Cambis was also at your yes. uh, at your show he interviewed me um, back then it's so funny for what you do because I was part of this leadership yes. board so that was the first introduction so from years from years you see that this in uh, he was not part of this, but there was a cooperation. But you can see that interested people find each other. So for me, that was kind of the, um, the first time where I felt, okay, this is up to me also mm -hmm. how I build it. I cannot rely on my parents or being this mad that they could not recommend me or tell me how study works or how work works. Yeah. They could not support me with that. So I transformed this kind of anger into, okay, it's up to me. Mm -hmm. I need to take initiative. I am responsible for that. And this is how we continue um, to do that. That's really powerful. Thank you, Alisa, for sharing. And for me, it, it came also from coaching and, and mentors and, and, and support the community where I said, I'm responsible for my life. I'm responsible for my career. Uh, I'm, you know, it's, it's in my hands. You know, so I'm I'm looking for the ways and I'm taking that responsibility uh, to do and create things that I really enjoy doing. And I recommend that to everyone because there's no way that someone and I, I do say it a little bit lightly in a, in a way it's, it's it's a huge responsibility. But on the other hand, who else could do that better than yourself? You know, who else, yes. you know, is taking care of my career, you know, even though you, you can have the most wonderful boss, but that boss has like five, 10, 15 people in, in his team, his, uh, his own career, his own life, uh, family, and so on and so forth. And, you know, there's uh, 24 hours and some limit. So it really starts with yourself. Um, every change really starts with ourselves. Uh, taking that first step yeah and who knows it better what your desires and aspirations yeah. are yeah of course yes support system and yes. I also had many mentors and coaches who helped me in the yeah. way and that's why I think I also loved staying in this because I see the power power of this role but as you say like it's still your choice it's about you creating the life you desire and it might be completely different color but no one else knows it it's like within you so yes. don't wait for permission just look and then ask for help or whatever you need. Yeah. Uh, going, um, pivoting now a little bit to networking and mentoring. So you mentioned a um, couple of things already in, in your story. Uh, but how would you recommend people to go around networks? So do you have any specific, you know, tips that you use for yourself? Um, yeah, during the studies, your studies are very important for us. You know, we create bonds and friendships over there, but moving to a new country, meeting new people. So how did you do that? Yeah, um, I love that. And as before the record, but we shared about, and I love that you, you are cold and you deserve this type of networking <laughs> queen. Um, so that's, that's good that we're diving also in this topic. Um, I think one of the most important lessons that I have learned for myself that I would love to share with others is to approach networking or community or mm -hmm. however you would like to phrase it, a place where you can connect to like-minded people from a place of authenticity. Mm 
So in the beginning, especially when I was a younger kid and just coming from business background and being like, you know, having my foot into the corporate world, I always, um, very often I felt I need to change somehow Mm -hmm. my image, how I am in order to fit in. Now, I'm not saying that it's not good to, to, to be open to see like who is out there and what context is. But I think very often I um, kind of neglected what I can bring with my, with my color to the table and thought I need to comply more. And over the years, I learned to be myself more and myself like be different for you or for Mm. anyone who's listening to, but myself, I love to talk about deep stuff. Like I usually skip uh, bullshit conversations. I'm not interested in the CV or uh, like tell me your titles. It's not that it's not important, but I think like I I know it from my heart. The people I connect most on a heart to heart level. And then there is a professional connection. This is where I'm going to stay. Like this is not, it's, it doesn't work. Like you tell me first the things you do. And then we have kind of this uh, very stiff handshaking. So that was, it's not my style. My style was being open, funny, friendly. I, I love um, joking around. I like this playfulness. So it's more fun for me at these gatherings. And it's more fun for others because I'm sure that everyone who is going there, like maybe you don't know people, then you have your image to protect and then you represent your company or whatever you are, uh, what your uh, agenda is to come there. But if we bring more joy and fun to that and remember that in the end of the day, we're all humans, Mm -hmm. humans with desires, dreams, failures, fears, uh, children, no children, aspirations, struggles, fights with our partners, that's all us. So for me, that was quite a secret and, and, and change to bring this humanness into connection. And um, I, for me, because I'm also so interested in many different topics, I've been from sex positive communities where it's a completely different context to network or to be with people to very corporate communities or in startup, like all of them have a different color, but I feel comfortable there because I'm not changing who I am. I'm just getting there, being curious. And this is a very, mm, I think that, that that's, if there's one message I would like to, to, mm-hmm. to share in terms of networking, that would be that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, I, I love that. And as you said, authentic, authenticity. Uh, and um, what I always like to say is like, you are different. So I'm different. So I, I was always, I felt different in, you know, I'm from Bosnia. So then I learned German here, then I came here, then I went to, you know, business corporate events and I'm only woman in, in the room and I'm tall one, and 180. I wear high heels, I like makeup and I talk tech. So, and I say always, that's my advantage. So I, I it's, it's, it's me. So it is who I am. So, and, um, I am, and I'm not planning to change it. So I'm not planning Love to change it. it. And I come from Bosnia, so it's it's part of my identity. So I'm I'm I have two last names, so I can pretend to be someone else. But you know, it's it's a, it's a tough life, and bring joy. And, and as you said, you know, people make business with with people. So in and um, you know, try to get to know people behind the title, not behind the LinkedIn profile, behind that uh, uh, business card, and. Um, yeah, so if someone is looking for a book, I can recommend the one from Keith Farazi on Never Eat Alone. It's a lot about, you know, it's it's a light read, a lot of stories, and he tells exactly what you said yourself, you know, the way he made businesses, you know, going with, you know, this uh, dinners with VIPs, corporate and so on. And then they would, he would sit with someone um, and they would end up, you know, talking about their, their marriage or their kids and then their, their family and, and their challenges that they have. And they would open up to one another and they would, you know, become friends or stay in touch and do businesses later on. So it, it and, but it's as well as well, cultural, I think cultural aspect as well the, uh, to some uh, pr- prefer to talk about expertise first, some talk, uh, some going on the uh, bonding and, and, and relationship. And I come from a strong relationship uh, environment as well, where we first, you know, get to know each other, the whole family, the, <laughs> the family tree, the, the whole community. And then we say, okay, I like you, I will do business with you. 
<laughs> yes, yes. I, I agree that can have like different cultural variations as well. That's important to consider. Um, and yeah, I, I relate to that, although I grew, did not meet business or my professional career yes. was not in Russia, but mm. I know from the from the vibe, it's a very yes. different than yes. Austrians have it, yes. how we do it. Yeah. Um, may I share um, an example which just Please. popped into my heart? Um, so um, at some points, um, I realized that I wanted, when I started to do more women empowerment work, so um, in, in this direction, I started uh, um, I started an initiative where I thought, let's do a thought experiment, bringing strangers together and speak about these deep topics. So um, I wanted to create kind of a format and networking, if you will, community where we bring strangers and talk about taboo topics or difficult challenges. Now, the thing is, the experiment was that we, the only thing we knew from each other was the name and the intention why you're here. Mm -hmm. No, no, no job title, no background, no, no language, no country. And that was kind of the introduction. That, so the thing is, when we met sometimes smaller groups, sometimes a bigger group, and people never saw each other. There was, um, I don't know where it was, but we, we spoke then later after three hours when you heard comments, we just connected over a topic, for example, not feeling worthy or um, um, problems in a relationship mm -hmm. or um, anything which there were many different topics. But um, when I heard the first time that somebody said like after this three hours, um, I shared with you things that I've never shared with my mm -hmm. closest friends or there. It really touched me and stuck with me because I really understood that it's not about, it's it's up to us how we can create it. And I think this need to connect on a deeper level is present with everyone. So beyond the culture, beyond the traditions, mm -hmm. beyond the setting, you're always in your power to bring this and create a safe environment or a playful environment with others. It's not set in so that's what I wanted to say. If you're somebody who's struggling with going out there, being authentic, it's it's assume that everyone wants what you want, be loved, have fun, laugh, connect, create business or whatever the, um, the aspect is. Mm. Go with, with heart and less with agenda. <laughs> Love it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Anything else so for, for our viewers in, for making it in Austria, so people considering to move uh, here, any other tip out, out of others that you have mentioned uh, that you would like to share with them? Um, yeah. I mean, for me, the, the, the example is uh, that I moved here quite younger, so I um, cannot maybe relate to someone who is more in the working class and then move or working age moves here but um i think maybe what you said before bring your magic with you because people are, are waiting to for this inconvenience this uh, 180 makeup high heels or whatever color you have um be bold just also feel home here because um and allow the things to to do what you you want to do um I heard throughout my, 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 my years here many times that this is not the way how we do it in Austria. So when I started talking about my vision, I want to bring this awareness about the female cycle into the corporate world, because this is where it also belongs. I heard many times, this is not possible here. This is not going to work. Um, it will take way longer. And the way at least I choose, and this is my invitation for everyone here. Yes, it's good to hear feedback and mentors and coaches. But mm -hmm. as we said before, don't forget, you are the one who knows best. And if this is something which is what you want to bring forward, then don't get stopped by that. So whatever then the maybe the conservative way of doing things, because I feel sometimes in comparison to US or some other countries, we're still more maybe reserved. Mm -hmm. um, in how to approach innovation, um, open topics. We're always waiting. I feel sometimes, I mean, like that's generalized, but what Germany is doing or UK is doing. So I see the trends already coming here and I know like Austria is, is a bit late. And at least my vision for this country is that we're taking more of a pioneer role instead of waiting, but it starts with the people who come here. So if you have a bold idea and it might be something that you've seen in your context, in your country, in your world that works, don't be afraid of no seers. Don't be afraid of those who say it's possible, not possible for this ecosystem. Maybe, but maybe that's complete bullshit. So mm -hmm. I would rather try it out and see what goes and see where you connect and get support rather than taking yourself out of the game before mm -hmm. it even begun. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alisa. <laughs> Nothing to add. 
nothing to add. <laughs> I really, I was like deep in, in listening to you um, for every sentence and, and every moment. Thank you so much for being our guest. Before we wrap up, uh, I would like to ask you what you're reading at the moment, or is there any book that you would like to recommend to our viewers? Um, I read the question before when you said that was like, you know, I have a, at, at my toilet, a Zen book, which I'm reading when I'm at the toilet. Um, but, um, and I, I changed my relationship a bit to books. So I'm, I, I am releasing more from, from this pressure to start the book and finish one book, yeah. but I would rather maybe, um, answer the question that you ask, what would I really recommend? And I, one so there are some books, but one one book that I think uh, can be read more often, and I do it for myself, is The Power of Now from Eckhart Tolle. Mm -hmm. um, this is something, depending where you are in your life with your state of consciousness, you can always dive in that. But this is definitely, definitely one of the, the things that I would um, go for. I would mm -hmm. love to share. Mm. Thank you. I will uh, write it in this um in the comment section as well in the description of this channel so your books and i am planning to make a, a books collection of making it in austria Ooh. so that we see what, what we are reading so there's so many interesting books and for instance this book power of now didn't came up in the last 40 episodes. really no no wow. so it's like it's super I'm surprised. cool to see uh what people are reading there was a lot of habits there was a lot, lot around you know habits of, uh, around leadership uh, as well fiction and and so so many things uh, related specific to different uh, topics like IT and, and project management and so on. So this uh, didn't come up, and I'm I'm Great. really looking forward to share it. I will pitch it more or spark the interest of if somebody never heard of that. I think if you cannot imagine, uh, if you cannot master the present moment. You cannot master business or life. So that's why connection, why this is so important to understand this power of now, how it relates even to advancing your career, your business, your, and your personal life. So, Pam, no, nice. I'm kidding. It's you don't must. have to read, but it's, it's a warm-hearted recommendation, yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for being our guest today and spending this afternoon with us. Um, I will link all of your contact, uh, contacts uh, as well uh, under this episode so people can get in touch with you so they can listen to your podcast as well. It's a really cool stuff what you're doing and I'm really happy to have you on this show. Mm -hmm. Adela, also from my side, um, thank you for doing this. Thank you for creating this space. Thank you for your positive vibe and smiles and thoughtful <laughs> questions. I love to see where this is goes. And thank you for having me on this beautiful rainy Sunday afternoon together. <laughs> together connected despite the the lockdowns and despite the zooms and all the virtual meetings it's possible so thank you all for watching uh thank you to all our viewers so if you like this episode just like uh um, comment share uh spread among your community connect with uh with alisa join our linkedin group uh subscribe to the channel um so more episodes uh to come and i'm really looking looking forward to each one of them. Thank you all and have a wonderful, wonderful uh, afternoon.